Hello, so happy you joined me on another session of Shine Like a North Star. My name is Carrie Burchell and I am the president of North Star Coaching. And I call these episodes that we do live every week, Shine Like a North Star, because they are intended to help you in whatever role and influence you have, be better, shine like the North Star, own your influence. So let's dive into two topics today that are really um, salient, <laughs> making you dizzy with all the things popping up there, sorry. <laughs> things that are really salient in the work I'm doing with my clients, which is the challenge of communicating and dialoguing in a way that people can engage and kind of get on the same page. So I describe tough conversations as people with different views and perspectives, and we really need to set up the stage where we can at least agree that we're on the same page and then move forward together. So today's two tips is helping you streamline that communication so that you and the other person that may start off in different spots can come together and agree that you're sort of experiencing the same sort of challenge, maybe for different reasons, but we can at least agree we wanna move forward together. So the first tip to help you game change that is the I feel statement. Now, if we think about the way people talk about their feelings, if you watch TV, sitcoms, casual conversations, overhearing stuff in the grocery store, wherever it is, people generally do not like sharing their feelings. It puts them in a vulnerable space. Oftentimes, we really don't even slow down enough to know what we feel. We're just caught in that spin of reaction, and it's whew, so hard to get sort of proactive and say, I'm going to slow down a second and sort of pause with my feelings so that I can proactively address them moving forward in whatever the conversation looks like. So Susan Scott in her book, Fierce Conversations from 2003 or 2004, talks about the I feel statement as part of her crucial conversation template. I've adapted some of this in the work that I do in tough conversation workshops to really help people slow down, pull out of the spin and articulate what the true um, issues are. And I feel statements are a really powerful part of any conversation, let alone tough conversations. So what's powerful about them is nobody wants to be the jerk. So if you say, I feel frustrated, I feel disappointed, I feel undermined, I feel restless, I feel vulnerable, it puts the other person in this position to kind of be the good person, right? Oh, you're frustrated? Geez, Carrie, let me um, help you with that. Or you feel vulnerable. Oh, wow, that's a scary place. Let me help, right? In the head, they might be thinking this. So I feel is important because you're putting your heart out there and your willingness to be vulnerable is gonna pull the other person into the conversation. They're gonna be more likely to hear you because you're being authentic, because you're being vulnerable. If we keep our shield up, then people aren't really as inclined to engage with us because we've got this armor up. Like you're not really being authentic. You're not saying what the real issue is. You're talking around stuff. So I was uh, doing a, a training session just this morning actually with a group of just brilliant leaders. I love working with them. And someone had talked about like, I got emotional and I tried, you know, to sort of influence the conversation through my emotion. And that's sort of the indirect way to get at some of this work that I'm talking about. More powerfully, if you say, I feel frustrated, period. Don't elaborate, don't explain why, just, just say it and let it sit. If the other per person or parties ask, geez, Carrie, why are you frustrated? Well, here's why. You know, then the conversation starts, but you wanna give people enough time to catch up to where you are. And if you're already zero to 100 and you're fed up and frustrated, then say it, period, and let them come on board with you. So this could be everything from you see somebody in the grocery store that packs your groceries, you see this person working all the time and they look really tired. Oh, I feel worried. You, know, you look super tired. Oh, that grocery packer is gonna just feel this loyalty and respect from you. 
If you say to somebody, I feel frustrated going back and forth like we are, then they're just going to have a pause and check. Oh, my, my interactions are causing frustration. I don't want to keep causing frustrations. And they might have a response that gets at the meat of the conversation more because you were willing to be vulnerable first. Whew. If we listen to everyday language where we avoid our feelings, you might hear, I feel like this isn't fair. I feel that the schedule is not well balanced. No, I feel taken advantage of because I'm working overtime for the third time in a row. So the issue is the overtime, but the I feel taken advantage of is where the other person is more likely to listen to why you feel taken, why you feel taken advantage of. Listen to it, right? In conversations in your personal life, in your home life, at work, in the community, we are less inclined to talk about our feelings because it's vulnerable and that's where the magic happens. When we are willing to be authentic and vulnerable and show up in our whole selves, that's where the magic starts to happen. So tip number one today is the I feel statement. Tip number two is what I'm generating here, the I own statements. So in any kind of conflict, let me make this even easier for you to read, in any kind of conflict, there's something that you've done to contribute to that dynamic. So if I feel taken advantage of because I've worked overtime three times in a row, my piece is that I've accepted all three of those times before I've drawn boundaries back. Like I own that I've avoided saying no. I own that it might look like I'm totally cool doing overtime. I own that I've sent a mixed message not pushing back on this before. All true, right? If, if the situation's messy, the old saying, it takes two to tango, well, it does. As hard as it is for you to own part of that, you do. So I feel statements first and then back it up with a I own something about that statement. What's powerful about the I own something in this mess, this dynamic that I'm driven crazy by, this dynamic that's waking me up at night, this dynamic that just makes me want to scream. Part of the magic in the I own statements is it's another layer of vulnerability. So with the I feel, someone's likely to come on board because nobody wants to be the jerk contributing to your bad feelings. And the piece about the I own is vulnerable because, geez, if Carrie's willing to say, that she has a part of this mess, well, maybe I own some of it too. Maybe I can own something. And eventually we have these different perspectives slowly coming together to then move forward. So we have, a, we have an ineffective discussion without being vulnerable. So we can pivot all over the place talking about I feel and blame and I feel like, I feel that. And we can talk about what you did in the process to make this broken and what documentation I have that you didn't do your part. That's all blaming. It's the inverse of accountability. When we're vulnerable, that's the gateway to accountability. So I can hold myself accountable by saying I own something in this. Now for both of these strategies, we want to think through the I feel too, let me pull these both up here. We want to think through back pocket lines. So I, one of my back, back pocket lines is I feel worried. I feel concerned. Like those are things that I feel often. I feel anxious. It's another back pocket one I use lots. So think about just a line that you can just throw out that honestly represents you know, where your go-to mode is when you're stressed. And then you don't have to think about it in the moment and kind of get caught up with the, oh, what's the right language? What's the right, whatever. So I feel anxious about blah, or just I feel anxious, period. And then think what you own. You know your communication style. So if you know me, and many of you listening do, I am a pleaser, recovering pleaser, I like to say. <laughs> my role in my family growing up was the peacemaker. What do I do with conflict? I avoid. 
I've got to be really intentional, which thankfully, I mean, obviously I'm a leadership coach. I have this down now, but still in my own stress, I have to consciously work myself through the steps of the tough conversation. Um, maybe you want to be a part of a workshop to learn those steps with me. And, and my go-to for the I own statement is I own that I've avoided this. I own that I accepted the three extra shifts of overtime before I told you how I felt taken advantage of. I own that, you know, it's probably surprising to you that I'm angry, but fair enough. Cause I haven't said anything. I've tried to like accommodate, hoping that things would kind of even out over time, be smooth. Right. I own it. I know that that's my conflict style. I can authentically say this is the piece I own because most of the time that probably is what happens. My husband teases me because he knows if I'm angry 24 hours later about something because I just, I simmer and I process and I have to rationalize if I'm justified feeling frustrated. That is, you know, my thing that I work on, right? You know your thing. So own it. That's all. Just own it. So these two lines, I really want to hear some stories about how you are using them in your personal and professional lives. It's a game changer when you talk about your feelings and it doesn't have to be a big, long conversation. It can just say, I'm feeling anxious. Let it sit. I feel angry. Let it sit. I feel undermined. Let it sit. Very powerful to give the other person a little bit of time to catch up. And you own something. It takes two to tango as much as the other person has driven us crazy, like fed up crazy. You own something that has contributed to that situation. Own it with pride. Because when you own something, you're actually modeling great behavior. You're modeling maturity, sophistication. You're, you're the whole package when you can own something. Because it says that you have a humility and a generosity in your spirit when you try to work through these issues. So I would love to hear from you. We have ongoing workshops about how to have tough conversations, how to give feedback effectively, how to um, really develop your emotional intelligence. So if you're interested in some workshop topics for your team, for yourself individually, we can loop you into some public courses that we have going on. And you, maybe you want a one-on-one -on -one session with me to really carve out the individual conversation. Just, just today, I've had two leaders reach out for spontaneous coaching sessions because they're part of the coaching package that I offer. And their work is about having tough conversations, which tells me that the world out there is just messy right now. We need your skills to figure out how to navigate that moving forward, right? We need you. And it's, it's real. The work is real. We need your influence. We need your expertise. And I would love to help you shine like a North Star. I'm Carrie Burchill. Find me at carrieburchill.com and certainly join me next week for our live. Take care.